Hey guys, so today we're going to be learning about Heidblend node and make sure to stay until the end of the video because this node is very important for your material making process and let's just dive right into the video. So basically um, what we have here is a node with three inputs and two outputs and we're going to talk about all of them. Uh, for starters we have uh, height top and height bottom and those are the most important ones. Mask is of course optional but I will show you that as well. So uh, we usually use this to, combi to combine some kind of shape and some kind of background texture in it and I will show you in the preview later on how this is uh, applicable. So basically here we have a simple clouds 2 node and a simple paraboloid tile sampler, nothing special here. And you can see the um, settings here is height offset, contrast, uh, mode and opacity. So, height offset, basically, it does what it says. It offsets the height and what uh, what will go on top and what will go on bottom and by how much. So, basically, see, you can see if I put this to 1, only the top will show. If I put this to 0, only the bottom will show. And now, um, the contrast is basically just how much... Um, how much of what is going to show. So as you can see, if I lower down the contrast, you can see that the clouds to uh, node is kind of cutting inside of the actual um, of the shape. And sometimes we want that for kind of smoother, uh, smoother transitions from uh, one shape to another and whatnot. And you, of course, you will see this in the actual preview. Another is mode. And I personally never used the bottom height priority. But you can use that if you want and if you find any use for it. So basically what this means is that the bottom um, the bottom uh, input will always try to stay le relevant. As you can see it is it is still um, it's, it's fading away but it's still trying to show itself. Whether if we put a balanced height it's kind of disappearing as you can see here. So it just uh, tries to stay relevant throughout the whole um, height offset thingy. And I almost always use use balanced height, so there, there is no doubt about it. And opacity is just a simple one to kind of modify um, the opacity of everything here. You can play around with it. I never did, to be honest with you. So yeah, you can you can mess around with it. So another uh, option is uh, another option that we have is a mask, and the mask is pretty simple. Uh, where where the white values are, that's where the actual um, effect will take place. So let me just plug it in. And as you can see, on the right hand side, nothing is taking effect. And on the left hand side, the effect is there. So if we flip those textures, you will see something else. Yeah, if we flip those textures, you will see that the relevant one is the clouds too. So it's just the one that is on the bottom stays... Um, relevant for this kind of mask input. So another one is we have blended height. So blended height is just uh, if I drag out a blend node, it's just a simple pretty much copy of this. And we have a height mask which is completely different. Height masks actually are really important for blending some stuff together and I will show you that in the preview as well. And they kind of give you, uh, they give you how much they blended what. Basically, it, it kind of sounds confusing, but uh, you will see right in the preview. So let's head to the preview and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So here, as you can see, we have a height blend between a shape and a pattern, basically a noise of grass. And these are rocky shapes and grass pretty much. And we have a height blend here and we have no mask because no mask was needed here. And here you can, you can see the full effects of the actual... Um, the parameters here. So uh, if we bump up the height offset, you see that the grass will start to engulf the rocks more and more until the rocks basically disappear. And if you uh, put the contrast to one, you will see how unnatural the transition looks here. Uh, how it's, it kind of just forcibly cuts off. But if we put this to something like 0.7 or something smoother, you can see that actually that grass is kind of slowly starting to fade into the rock. And as we lower it, let's say 0.3, you can see a heavy effect of this. You can see that uh, the grass is showing almost everywhere. And now for this particular material, uh, high, uh, 
uh, low contrast is uh, low is bad for this, but still a little bit of contrast just makes it so uh, those hard edges are not shown as much. And here we have two outputs, of course, the height and the blended height and the blend mask. And here you can see that we are using the blended mask for blending two albedos together, as you can see. And here we have the blended mask and that is showing where the grass should be. And by that we put in the, as background we put the rocks coloring and as foreground we put the grass albedo. And by blending them together on just copy using this, mask, this opacity or mask, whatever you want to call it, uh, gets us this amazing result of blending uh, two maps together. Also, you can see it being used here as a normal map. And again, it's really good to use these masks to have more control over your materials. This is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to see more content like this, leave a like and comment down below. See you guys. If you like this tutorial and would like to learn more about material creating and substance designer, consider checking out my Skillshare course down in the description. It is your go-to place to start learning more in-depth about creating materials inside substance designer and is also amazing for beginners that want to hop right into material creation. Also, if you use my link in the description, you get to watch the entire course entirely for free.